Okay, and uh, now we are uh, live. So, uh, welcome everybody. I'm here with uh, James Young. Hi. Uh, who has a bionic hand. And I'm, I'm just waiting for uh, the number of viewers to increase because uh, there doesn't seem to be anybody right now. Uh, the number of viewers is now increasing. Mm -hmm. So here we have a bionic hand, a very awesome one, which, uh, you know, I would probably want to have one in the future, even though my hand is already working pro properly. So, <laughs> so can you tell us something about the bionic hand? which you, you have right here. I mean, it, it looks very awesome. So yeah, the arm itself is it's kind of a unique bespoke creation. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it with... It's funded by a video game company, Konami. Hmm. Uh, they worked can, with, can you speak louder? Yeah, they worked with uh, Sophie Di Oliviera Barata. She basically creates unique prostheses for anybody that wants to express themselves uh, and not just have something that's like an off-the-shelf solution. Hmm. Um, and so yeah, it's basically been created to represent a bit of science fiction and bring that into reality because that's basically what I am, I'm just a science and tech geek. So, so you are interested in... this uh, This reminds me of uh, a video game. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the focus. Uh, this reminds me of a video game, I think it's called uh, Deluxe Evolution or... Deus, Deus Ex, yeah. Well, yes. interestingly enough, this hand's made by Open Bionics and it's a prototype version. And we created this on... Uh, well, it's been in the making for about one and a half years, um, but Deus Ex and Open Bionics recently teamed up themselves to create a new new hand, uh -huh. literally the one from the game. Okay. So I think whilst I, whilst we're here, uh, Open Bionics were at E3 in LA, and they've been unveiling that new hand. So it's pretty much similar technology, but also in another awesome format. So definitely check that out. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, it can display different lights, right? Uh, yeah. Can you can you show so us? Change the brightness and change change the lights into different colors. So this is one that I coded for uh, a talk. So whatever I whatever I want, I can get a USB plug out of the back and plug it into the computer. Can you see that? Yeah, it's just one of the wires that comes out. So yeah, I just plug this part into my computer whenever I need to. Awesome. And what do you do with that? Pro reprogramming or? Yeah. So there's a teen Arduino inside, which is like a, a small version of an Arduino that controls the lighting and the power system. Uh, okay. The hand itself actually has another 18 mega chip inside it. So that's kind of another similar setup, but it's completely kept inside the hand unit. So it's, it's essentially the hand and the arm are different, different creations. So that's something that's been 3D printed by a separate company. It's so fantastic. Uh, what is the energy source? People are asking. The energy source? Yeah. Uh, we pretty much, we use some, because the, the, the 12 volt motors in the fingers, they need quite a lot of juice. So we've got a high voltage uh, lithium lithium battery pack from... Right now it's lithium battery? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually left the panel that covers the battery at home, so you can see it there. Whoa, <laughs> that is interesting. It's a chunky battery. It's essentially from a, a quadcopter, uh -huh. like one of the really, really big ones. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it needs like its own separate recharger because it's so chunky. So. That is so awesome. Uh, you can separate it, right? You can uh, separate it from your uh, yeah, yeah. body. So we just... Uh, can we put it right here on the... If I just stand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it kind of twists off like a, like a, a camera lens. That's so that amazing. Pull it off, which is really useful for me because sometimes if I'm getting in my car, I don't really want to have this this kind of interfering with the steering wheel because yeah. I, I can't really move it from the elbow onwards. So, so people are asking what was the cost of uh, producing um, this? Because it's a one-off and we used a lot of artists to help 3D design and illustrate the, the kind of concept before. It did rack up the cost. Um, but also the carbon fiber paneling is kind of a unique uh, new construction. So the company were actually very good and kind of did some mates rates with us. Uh -huh. Uh, but yeah, I think if you were re to recreate it today from scratch, it would probably cost you need like sixty thousand pounds probably. To get sixty thousand pounds. It's because it's like that is really costly. I mean, people yeah. who uh, who are empty, there. I mean, how how can they afford you know something like that? Well, essentially, what you would do if you were an empty trying to get into this position, I think this stuff is open source at the, at the base. The hand itself. Everything is on openbionics.com. You can basically find out how to build it, what materials mm. you need, what software you need. Okay. Um, it's actually expensive because of how we produced it, and it's, a, it's kind of an art piece. But uh, if, if you wanted to make your own, you could probably just design it in, in 3D. With 3D printing, no, it's possible. Now, there is also an interesting thing. You also have a bionic leg. Uh, so, leg that is... 
Also, another thing. The, the leg isn't bionic because it has, it has nothing that is electrically uh, kind of mimicking human function. That's, that's the kind of definition of bionics, is to have something that is using electronics and motors to, to be sort of matching a human function. Uh -huh. But this is a completely passive leg. This is a normal standard leg. But... So uh, you plan to also have them both in the same style? Um, I did originally. I, I asked the game company if we could go for both, but the main character from the game, Mesco Solid 5, mm. was the inspiration for this, this project, so they essentially didn't want to just do the leg. They, they really wanted to focus on creating an alternative functioning hand, because in the game the character has uh, like stealth functions, he can use his arms to kind of mm -hmm. use sonar and identify enemies, for example. So, That's so they, we wanted to create something that was had these like weird, funky yeah. features. So. I mean, it really looks awesome. I mean, I like the design. Can you, uh, you know? Attach it again. Yeah. So we have this port. What is this for? That's a Limo connector, which is something that you see on quite a lot of camera equipment. But it's like a miniaturized version. Okay. It has eight pins inside, and that passes the data signals from the electrodes up in the shoulder harness all the way down the arm to the hand. And it also provides power to the top part of the uh, harness so okay. that I can implement speech in the future. Like, um, I think we're planning to do another display up on the shoulder because it's got. This area that can, can we see that? Can you see that? All right, look at that. <laughs> That's 3D printable, basically. I've got the files. So this uh, and is it open source? Or uh, this is this is our own personal design. So I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if I'm going to release the files, but I potentially this is essentially a prototype. So it's probably okay. not going to be useful to recreate for people, especially since it's been custom designed to fit my body. So what happened is that we 3D scanned the upper body with a 3D scanner, like a 300 pound scanner from, uh -huh. uh, I think it's a structure sensor, occipital structure sensor. And those are, they're kind of iPad mounted and they're really good for just creating really quick and, and easy designs. So. Amazing stuff. Can you touch it? Yeah. How heavy is it? Uh, it's about 2.3 kilos for this part. All right. And the remainder is is also rather heavy because of awesome. the amount of silicon that's in there to make it soft. So at which situations do you not attach it? When you sleep, when you... <laughs> um, well, the harness is basically, it's all kind of strapped on with straps, which isn't the best the best, best way to attach an artificial limb. So I'm personally fundraising for titanium bone implants. Okay. So instead of having this whole piece, I would just have something sticking out of my bone that allows me to attach artificial limbs. and. At the moment, this is kind of mounted on my shoulder, like a, a bit of a rucksack, it's just held on. Uh -huh. So my arm inside can't really push it around or get much control over it, which is the problem if you're an upper arm amputee. And if I had the implant, I'd be able to lift it up to the side and reach for things, for example. So okay. that's what I'm fundraising for yeah. at the moment, essentially. Okay. It would allow me such so you, you have a fundraising? Uh, you have a link? Yeah, it's gofundme.com forward slash titanium james. Alright, I, I, I can post the link, you know, uh, on the video awesome. later on so that uh, anybody who wants to assist you with this project, uh, they can donate. Yeah, there's um, going to be way more with projects as well. I'm remaking new arms. It's so awesome, so amazing, and as some people are describing, you look like Iron Man. Yeah. I mean, half Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of a lot of kids really love it. They, they it's, come up to be. It's so, so awesome, and I love how the lights, you know, keep changing. All, yeah. all right, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, James, thank you so much for being with us live. This was really awesome. Uh, Thanks for having me. Bionic hand, and also we have a leg that will also have a similar design in the near future. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, yeah. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. All right, this was Hashim from. Uh, Ken Leons in France here in Ken and it's a very awesome event so uh, yeah we'll keep you posted thank you for watching bye